Okay. Now, first off, I want to say good morning to you all one more time. And I want... Thank you. And, and, and some of you um, are either so old that you have forgotten or so new that you never knew who I am. Okay? So, 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 so just to remind you all, I am the Reverend Dr. Charles Henry Jensen. He's also Charles Henry. Don't forget it. Okay? I am the pastor emeritus of this great church, and this morning, since our pastors, who are, by the way, my sons, are away, I have been asked to feed you the word of the Lord. Now, I just want you to know, I tried to remember when the last time was that I stood in this pulpit to divide the word of God, and I can't come up with a date. Um, now, that may be a function of my age. I recognize that. As we get old, things seem to slip away, you know, into the distance. But it's been a long time since I have had the privilege of addressing this congregation. And I am honored. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm just honored. It's good to be here and to be standing here in the pulpit. Now, this morning, we're going to continue our study of the book of 1 Samuel. We're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 15, and I'm going to attempt to deal with that entire chapter. And as you are turning there, let me just tell you that this is a harsh passage of Scripture. Some passages in the Scripture we just love. They are lovely, they're beautiful. Some of them confront us with hard truth, and this is one of the latter. It is a harsh chapter. There are things contained herein that you will not like and that will not make sense to you. However, the lesson, notice the word is singular, there's only one lesson in all these verses. The lesson from this passage of Scripture is real simple. Obey the Lord. Now you write that down because I want to tell it to you over and over again. But it is the single lesson you need to take home from this passage of Scripture today. Obey the Lord. Now, just for the record, I put it up here so I can do this. Just so you know what I'm talking about. This is the Word of the Lord. It is a Bible. It, is, it does not contain the Word of the Lord. It is is the word of the Lord. And it is our responsibility to know what this book says from this cover to this one. Ignorance is no excuse. If you do not know what the word of the Lord says, it's your fault. There are ample opportunities provided to you weekly in this church to learn what the word of God says. And whether you know what it says or out of your ignorance do not know what it says, you are held accountable to it. Your obligation, if Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, is to follow the word of the Lord. The lesson today is obey the Lord. Now, it is true that the Bible builds fences around us for our protection. Like all fences, the fences which the Bible builds hem us in. And we, by nature, rebel against anything that hems us in. We want to be free to organize our lives according to what seems right to us. But God's Word hems us in. That is the problem with the text that is before us today. It simply teaches us that when we choose to disobey the word of the Lord, when we get outside the fence designed to protect us, we are prey to the enemies of God. When we get outside of the fence, Satan rushes in like a roaring lion, and his intention is to devour us. The lesson is obey the Lord. 
Obey God's words. The part you like and the part you don't like. For your own good. Obey the word of the Lord. Stay within the fence of protection. Obey the Lord. Now, have you found it? 1 Samuel chapter 15. You thought I forgot, didn't you? Okay, I'm old, but not that old. Okay, look with me at verses 1 to 3. It says, the Word of God says, Samuel said to Saul, I am the one Yahweh sent to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen to the message from Yahweh. This is what Yahweh Almighty says. Now, quite frankly, Samuel speaks to Saul as Israel's spiritual leader. He is God's representative to the nation. He is establishing his authority, and he is making sure that the king knows that he is speaking to him on God's behalf. I could go off on a tangent here and tell you our president needs somebody to do that for him. To say to him, listen to the word of the Lord. But that's another sermon. Okay? The message from Saul, from Samuel to Saul, is listen up, buddy. God is talking to you. Now you hear me. You put aside every other thought, and you listen up right now. Because God is speaking to you. Samuel said, that God said, I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, Camels and donkeys. I told you that there were harsh things here that you would not like to hear. The first thing I need to tell you about this is that this is an old, long-standing offense. Centuries before, during the time of the exodus from Egypt, the Amalekites had offended God by ambushing Israel. Now, an aside, I could tell you that that's why as a nation we want to protect Israel. Okay. We move against her, and God will avenge that act of sin. But that's another story. The story about the Amalekites is told in Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 to 14. God told Israel at that time that he would punish the Amalekites for this act of aggression against Israel. The sin was still on the books. But God had not yet enacted judgment upon the Amalekites. But the day of reckoning had come. We don't like that, do we? We think somehow we can escape the consequences of our sin. That the day of reckoning will not come. But for the Amalekites, the day of reckoning had come. God put Amalek under a ban. See Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 17 to 19, if you want to know about a ban. God said that everything Amalekite was to be destroyed. Everything. Now, I've got to ask a question. What don't we understand about everything? Okay. See, it's one of those biblical words that gets us all confused. Because everything means everything. God meant everything. Children, babies, animals. Anything which had anything to do with these people was to be destroyed. We don't like that. I don't like that. You don't like it, do you? It doesn't make sense to us. We want to argue with the concept. Infants, children, everything. God's command is clear. 
destroy everyone and everything which is Amalekite. You struggling? Remember the lesson. Obey the Lord. Even when you do not like what God says. Even when you want to argue with God about the concept. Obey the word of the Lord. Verses 4 to 6. So Saul summoned the men and mustered them. 200,000 foot soldiers, 10,000 from Judah. Saul went to the city of Amalek and set an ambush in the ravine. Then he said to the Canaanites, Go away, leave the Amalekites so that I do not destroy you along with them, for you showed kindness to all Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites moved away from the Amalekites. Now, Saul, the king, set out to obey the word of the Lord. He summoned the army, and he wanted went to do what God had commanded him to do. The text says, verse 7, Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havilah to Sir, near the eastern border of Egypt. He took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive, and all his people he totally destroyed with a sword. But Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the cattle and the fat calves, and the lambs. Everything that was good. These, they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. What did God say? Is that what Israel did under the command of King Saul? Nope. Nope. This is only partial obedience to the word of the Lord. They did not do what God told them to do. They did what seemed right in their own eyes. <laughs> hey. Why destroy what's good? Hmm. What's God thinking? Has he lost his mind? They wandered outside the fence of protection and they did what seemed right in their own eyes. They did not obey the Lord. Verse 10. Then the word of Yahweh came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and cried out to Yahweh all night. Okay. Or oh no. God's judgment fell on King Saul because King Saul did not follow God's instructions. And Samuel, God's representative to the nation of Israel, is angry. Angry. Because the king didn't follow God's command. Angry at the people because they did not follow the word of the Lord. Angry. All night long, Samuel pleads to God. But folks, the command of God was clear. And the truth is that no one had listened to the word of the Lord. Instead, they did what seemed right to them instead. When following God's word 
did not make sense to them. You hearing me? When it didn't seem clear to them, when they didn't like what God said, when they wanted to argue with the concept, when following God's Word did not make sense to them, they seemed right in their own eyes. Verse 12. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul. But he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. There he set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone on to Gilgal. When Samuel reached Saul, Saul said, Hey, bud, Yahweh bless you. I have carried out Yahweh's instructions. Ain't I hot stuff? But wait a minute. Are you hearing it? Saul does not even know that he failed to do what Yahweh had commanded him to do. He thinks he has been totally obedient to the Lord. But Samuel said, What then is this bleeding of sheep I hear in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle I hear? Oh my, for the beauty of sarcasm. <laughs> Samuel says, Oh yeah, really? You did what God told you to do, did you? And I can feel the anger trembling in his bones and shaking his voice. If you did what God told you to do with all these, what are all these sheep and cows? Where did they come from, dude? See, it is possible to believe that you have done what God told you to do when in fact you have not. But what a hard lesson that is to swallow, isn't it? You need to know the Word of the Lord from one cover to the other. And you need to follow it carefully and listen to those who will give you godly advice based on the Word of the Lord. You need to be careful not to build monuments to yourself. Oh, I am so wonderful. You need to follow the Word of the Lord. You need to be careful not to step out that fence which confines you. Because once you leave the protection of God's Word, Satan is waiting to devour you like a roaring lion. Saul answered, the soldiers. It, it was the soldiers. They brought them back from, from the Amal Amalekites. And I just want to say, liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> Look back at verse 9. Saul was clearly part of the decision. He says, they spared the best of the beast and the cattle and sacrifice to Yahweh, your God. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Your God? Isn't Yahweh his God too? But, he says, we totally destroyed the rest. Saul says, I had to, bud. They made me. It was for a religious purpose, to offer sacrifice to God. He said, I had to disobey God. Really? They forced him? He had to disobey God. And dear old Samuel, verse 16 says, enough. Translate it to vernacular. That means shut up. Oh, really, Samuel yelled at Saul. And I believe he yelled it. You had to disobey God? Really? Well, let me tell you what Yahweh said to me last night. Translate it. Here it comes, buddy. Tell 
me, Saul replied. And Samuel told them. He told Saul that because he had disobeyed the command of God and pounced on the plunder and did evil, God was taking the kingdom of Israel away from him. You have become too big in your own eyes. So big that you are no longer useful to God. And Saul protested against this. He insisted still that he had really obeyed God. He actually said, remember the cows and the sheep and the king. He actually said, I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag their king. The soldiers took the sheep and the cattle from the plunder and the best of what was devoted to God in order to sacrifice them to Yahweh, your God, at Gilgal. He completely destroyed everything except that which he had not destroyed. He was, in essence, condemned by his own words. Folks, he was only partially obedient to God. He was obedient in part. When it did not make sense to him to follow God completely, he did what was right in his own eyes. He stepped out from behind the fence of protection. And then Samuel smacked Saul with a compilation of scripture verses which were not yet even written down as scripture. The Holy Spirit was speaking words that would later be written down by King David and by King Solomon, who was not even born at that time, and then by the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah. He said to Saul, to obey God is better than sacrifice. And rebellion against the word of God is like witchcraft. Samuel told Saul that God had removed the kingdom of Israel from his hand. Because he had chosen his own way over obeying the word of the Lord. Folks, don't miss it. Saul lost it all because he did not obey God. Now it's true that he attempted an insincere repentance to get back what he had lost. But things were broken by his disobedience which could not be restored. The judgment of God had fallen on him and he had lost the kingdom as well as fellowship with Yahweh. Now the point of all this is simple. Obey the word of the Lord. Obey the Lord. When God makes sense to you, obey the Lord. When God's Word doesn't make sense to you, obey the Lord. When you like what God says, obey the Lord. When you don't like what God says, obey the Lord. When voices around you are telling you that God's Word does not make sense, obey the Word of the Lord. Even if it will cost you everything you have, obey the Word of the Lord. Obey. When your ears are itchy and you want to do what seems right in your own eyes, obey the word of the Lord. Do not, under any circumstances, step outside the fence God has set for your protection. It's dangerous out there. Instead, obey the word of the Lord.